Well, oh, there hi there. Uh, my name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media, uh, and I'm interviewing the director of Play Dream, uh, Mark Evans. Hey, Austin. How you doing? Ah, uh, doing okay, considering <laughs> just got back from a dentist appointment. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about Play Dream because um, I, I will say it is not a film that was on my radar, if I'm going to be quite honest, um, prior to Tribeca. But I just watched it this morning and wow. Um, this, and I guess that kind of leads into my first question is this film is very visually distinctive. In fact, I, I don't want to call a percentage, but I think at least 60% of this stuff is archival footage. Yeah. Or, or even just new stuff like the clay stuff, um, the clay um, interstitials. Mm -hmm. So was that something you came up with or was that just something someone, uh, where did that come from? Well, I, I do love archival films and, uh, you know, some of my favorite documentary filmmakers would be like Errol Morris and Brett Morgan and, and they've kind of, you know, paved the way, I think, with what you might say this it kind of is a little bit of their style with like collage and a lot of different elements and um so i've just i've always loved there the, were two filmmakers that really inspired me you know early on when i got into documentary and um and one of the choices was i wanted to wait in this film as long as possible before showing like an interview talking head which was always going to be a, a part of the film i knew the narrative was going to be driven by interviews um, but I didn't, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to look like that certainly all the way through. So I think the first time you see somebody on camera, it's, it's Will and it's it, like present day, it's Will and it's like 14 minutes into the film. And that was certainly by design. Um, and to, yeah, to me, it's just a lot of fun, like figuring out how all these pieces, you know, it's a puzzle or it's a collage, but how all these pieces work together. And, um, and then of course you've got like, you know, the end of the film, like kind of the final act, it's where we pick up in present day and a lot of that shot, cause that was more present day, but everything that had happened up to that point was in the past. So, um, you know, having that kind of treasure trove of archival material was just certainly a gift uh, for, for the film. And then just, yeah, figuring out how to use it and then figuring out how to hopefully have some of Will's work, the clay, you know, his clay works from the past, how to try to incorporate some of that, not just when we're talking about the work itself, but when we're talking about the emotional um, stories, the emotional beats of the story, how can we incorporate some of that through? So, because Will was so much tied to his characters and his work, like that's really how he expressed his emotion in a lot of ways. So I wanted the work to also express what Will was going through as much as possible. Yeah, it actually kind of reminded me of a the first archival film I saw was Apollo 11 back yeah. in 2019. Yeah, stunning film. And on the uh, note of Errol Morris, have you seen my Psych my psychedelic love story yet? Yeah, I think it's kind of Errol Morris. Like, at, I don't I don't know if it's at his best necessarily, but it's at its like most Errol Morris ist. Yeah, and I, I loved it. You know, because I'm a fan of his. Um, but yeah, I uh, it, my, my, I love how he used the graphics in there, like rebuilding all the graphics. But, oh, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, he's he's certainly a master. Yeah, it is it is one of I. Still need to go back and uh, re-review that because that was one of my highlights of uh, AFI Fest mm -hmm. uh, 2020. Yeah, I think I saw it back in October. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I, I think another question is, I didn't realize how much I knew about Will Vinton until like literally the end of the movie. Um, and like, I, I guess my question would be, how, what what brought this kind of what brought this need to talk about Will Vinton? Was it like a um, that kind of thing, or was it the recent claymation uh, rise? I guess I don't know what, yeah. what you'd call well, it. You know, I didn't I didn't think of any of that when I got into it. Um, when I when I first kind of was. You know, I, I found an article, I was looking, this is 2015, you know, I was looking for next projects okay. and I came across an article that had been written recently about kind of the rise and fall of Will Benton Studios and, and, the, and the article felt like a movie. So right there I was attracted to it and I knew Will Benton's name and I knew his mustache and I knew some of the early Very work, memorable. Or not, not the early work, some of the work from like the night, like the California Raisins and the Noid or characters that I kind of grew up with. Um, 
And so that, that's what sparked it more than anything. I just thought this sounds like a great story um, and I'd like to pursue this. And and so that that's how it all started. Now, obviously I uncovered a lot of things along the way. I don't think that I knew that Will Bitten Studios, um, I, I knew that there was this, um, you know, struggle with Phil Knight, um, but I don't know if I necessarily even knew at that time when I first got into it that that ultimately became like a, um, but uh, but yes, I mean, you're, a lot of people are very familiar with a lot of the work that either Will made or that Will paved the way for, but they might not yeah. necessarily know who Will is, and and this film will hopefully change that. Yeah, it is when um, I think when we start to see uh, the California raisin spot in the movie, when I started to realize oh, that's who this is. Mm -hmm. It's just like, okay, oh, this is the Noid. This is that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, because I was watching it like halfway through, I was like, do I even know this guy? And then I'll let, oh, got it. Um, so, and I just want to take a moment. That one of my, fa all my favorite documentaries are uh, about people I do not know about. Mm -hmm. um like the errol morris documentary um yeah i didn't know any uh oh timothy leary stuff that was all like it before me so yeah. i was just like um so i i guess a um a, a another question uh i'd have was a lot of this stuff uh, the later half of the movie is talk, talking about Bob Gardner. Um, I think that's how you say his name, right? Yeah. Um, and was that something you uncovered? Because I've never heard his name before and that might be just my own ignorance there. Like, what, was that something you uncovered during the process of this documentary or was that something that just naturally came out of it? Yeah, I, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with Bob because I mean, I, even though I knew Will's name and his work when I first got into it, I, I wasn't even familiar with like Close Mondays, which was a 1974 short film that Will won an Academy Award for with Bob Gardner. The two of them created this together. So I didn't, I knew nothing about that going into it, but really early on, it was pretty clear that that was a big part of Will's story. One, they won an Oscar on their first film together. That in and of itself is big, but just what happened with that relationship and over how many decades really that it kind of lingered on the, the you know, the aftermath of their relationship. So I, I knew that that would be a part of it. Um, I was grateful to get um, Bob's, uh, one of his two daughters, to do an interview for the film, I really feel like, then that came kind of later in the film. Like we had pieces together and it, and it felt like that storyline was missing a voice. Um, and, and that voice was to kind of represent, you know, Bob in a way. And uh, so I think that was really beneficial. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, I don't want to give too much away, I guess, but it's, you know, it's very fascinating side of the story. And also to me, there was something about it's for Will, the journey of like starting his artistic and creative career with Bob Gardner, this creative genius, just the two of them in their in Will's basement working together, and that thirty years later, kind of he, Will sitting with Phil Knight, one of the richest, most powerful people in the world, as his as another partner, and just yeah. like that, like how do we get from point A to point B is really uh, quite fascinating. Yeah, I, I love that whole aspect of it. How you start with the case and then end with the case. Um, that's just fascinating. Um, but I, I wanted to say something real quick. Um, I just wanted to praise that opening shot with Will Vinton looking into that, uh, clay set where they're like, Hey, are you guys finished? Yeah. I loved that shot. That was other than yeah. the white. That, that, that's a great shot. And all of that, that's just a, 100 percent great shot it's an amazing shot so that was in uh like 1978 or 79 uh short documentary that um that that will stu will in the studio had put out called claymation and basically that that was where they coined the phrase claymation was in this little short documentary and it was like a how-to of of how clay animation and how claymation works um, so that's where that came from. It's a great shot. And I got to credit our editor, Lucas Seller, in the earlier cuts before Lucas came on, I wasn't using that shot the right way with as much impact. It was like kind of just somewhere in the middle of the film. And it worked 
well there, but he had the great idea to start with it and to bring it up and to put those little sound bites along with it. And I think it just makes for a great kind of first moment of this film, him coming through looking at that door. It reminded me of like, like, you know, something you'd see with like Jim Henson or something like that. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's a, it's an amazing shot and I always loved it. And I think, like I said, Lucas really had, had the right idea to, to, to make it the very first shot of the film. Yeah. I, I, I just love that. Um, but um, I think we're about out of time, but um, I just, how can people catch this film? I know there's like a hundred different ways. I think June 13th. Well, not, not not yet, not yet. Because right right now, it's you know we're just starting our kind of distribution approach. Okay. But uh, you know, the one way that people will be able to see it will be uh, starting on Sunday as part of Tribeca, the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, we'll have its premiere Sunday at seven Eastern, Sunday June thirteenth, um, and people all over the U.S. can watch it online as part of Tribeca at home. So um, wherever you are in the United States, uh, you can see it as soon as Sunday. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll uh, make sure everyone knows to check it out. I mean, if you guys, if anyone watching in the future um, is has Tribeca process, please go see this. This is going to be one of the highlights. I promise you. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, and I think that's 